That's right, everybody. It is another wrestling episode of Tap Outs and Touchdowns. As a matter of fact, it is the season five finale of the wrestling shows of Tap Outs and Touchdowns. As always, it's your gully, bully. As always, it's your guy, Bully Rye. Easy for me to say. Uh, PJ Steven had some scheduling conflicts, so he will not be joining us tonight on our season five finale. But with us is one of my co-hosts on the Cat Cave. Uh, he hosts himself a couple of shows on his own, uh, be it Out of Pocket or Drop the Mic, the wrestling podcast. Michael Davis is with us. Mike, what's going on, bud? Nothing much, man. It's been a long week in wrestling. I actually went to SmackDown on Friday night and got to feel that atmosphere in person. So I'm excited to hop on, tap out some touchdowns, love what you and PJ are doing, and just excited to talk wrestling with you. Yeah, I forgot that SmackDown was in Charlotte last week. Listen, I'll be honest. Um, I'm not a fan of watching SmackDown in person. I went to SmackDown here in Greenville a while ago, and it was How long after ago? like that's that's the oh, kicker. Yeah. I'd have to go look at the timestamps of my pictures, but here's the problem. So I know people that have gone to SmackDown and they've recorded two episodes of SmackDown. Cool, right? All well and good whether it was the holiday episode or like they were going to Saudi Arabia. So they had to record two episodes. Like they showed up at seven and they were an hour late because they started recording at six or whatever the case was. So like that would be cool. But the past two SmackDowns that Greenville, South Carolina has hosted. Um, how do I say this? They were after premium live events. And so half the show was spent recapping the, the PLE and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of wrestling, and especially the one that I paid to go to, to sit in the upper deck. Uh, I say the upper deck to, to sit in the in the I wouldn't call them the nosebleeds, but sit in you know the upper deck of the of the, state, of the Coliseum. And it just it wasn't a lot of wrestling. And for the money that I paid for it, I'm like never again will I go to SmackDown. And so then I go to Raw. Wow. I took Bank, I took Baker Bill to Raw. We had a great time. They're coming back here in May. My mom offered to buy me tickets. I'm like, let's let's hold off. Like, I've got other stuff that I need to worry about. Uh, having just gone back to work, and, and that's that's all another story. But uh, but SmackDown was good. You you had yourself a good time. You enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. Obviously, with you know last week's press conference, I didn't expect Roman to show up. I didn't expect The Rock to show up. But it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. Me and my dad looked at each other Friday afternoon. We we're like, you want to go to SmackDown tonight? in charlotte and we went had a great time got to see triple h live for the first time um really had that back to 09 feel of randy orton coming out like once voices hit in the arena it was like okay all eyes are on him uh he and Sami Zayn had a great match i didn't expect the elimination chamber qualifying matches to happen on friday smackdown so we got to see a lot of raw superstars like Sami Zayn came over, Drew McIntyre came over, uh, and then you had the tag team number one contendership. So DIY faced Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. Uh, I love Tyler Bate. Um, he's a huge inspiration for me. So uh, it, it was overall like a really, it was a really fun experience. Our seats were great too. I can't believe that's the first time you've ever seen Triple H live. I mean, I, I can't. I can't put in the words. I was in I was in an episode of Monday Night Raw in Columbia, South Carolina, when they were doing um, they were doing the whole like uh, and I I don't say his name on the show, and I guess I should have warned you about that. That there's two names that we don't say on the show anymore, and one of them uh, PJ Steven and I talked about. But when the former owner of the company, uh, they were making jokes about how he he loved a certain uh, a certain male appendage, and uh, and and DX came to Columbia, South Carolina. And was trying to gift this person uh, the the mascot for the South Carolina Gamecocks and cocky, and uh, and went on this rant about how funny it was. And that was a great time. But I, yeah, it's it's crazy to think that like I know people that that that, that say like seeing the Rock in person is a bucket list. And how have I never seen a you know, Triple H? And I, I want to see the Undertaker. And I, I need to see Sting. I need to see Sting's last match. And we're gonna get that in a second um, because I, I you know I need to see Sting before I'm done. Like before he's done wrestling. And all I can think about is, wow, I've been really lucky because I was I was going to wrestling shows when The Rock was still an active roster. I was on I was I went my first wrestling show ever was a WCW Money Nitro where Sting wrestled. Um, 
I believe it was, it, it might have even been a dark match. It might not have been on TV match. Um, but he wrestled on the show. It was when him and Lex Luger formed a tag team. Um, I saw him, matter of fact, uncensored, and I think 98. He came down from the rafters on that pay per view in Charleston. So, oh, wow. some of the stuff that I've gotten to see, like I did, I kind of took for granted back then, considering like what people like kind of wish to see now. I saw Undertaker wrestle Gold Dust in a casket match. I got to see, um, you know, what a just, what a throwback yeah. right there. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's good stuff, man. So I'm glad you got to enjoy it. And, and speaking of all the wrestling that we've been talking about, we've, we've had a year in, in the professional wrestling. A lot of stuff has taken place over the last year. And I kind of wanted to broach the conversation of, of if you can kind of recall dating back to last WrestleMania, what are some of the things from this past year in, in pro wrestling um, kind of stood out? Do you have any favorite moments or any favorite matches that you can remember from the, from the past year? Oh yeah, definitely. So if we're going favorite matches and we, can't go past last year's WrestleMania because I always think with 2023, Okada or Osprey and Omega in wrestling. Okay. And then yeah. they had the follow up match. I personally like the Wrestle Kingdom match a little bit more, especially with Osprey getting dropped on his head in the turnbuckle and then starting bleeding. Um, I thought All In was special. I thought it was a special moment. Um, I feel like Adam Cole and MJF, that story carried. AEW for most of 2023. Uh, I mm -hmm. thought it was at one point the best story in wrestling. Um, you had the bloodline stuff, of course. Um, but I really, I really am excited about Swerve Strickland and the way he ascended. Like last year, he was like, okay, he's on the roster. What is AEW doing with him? And you like classified him with a Malachi Black or a Buddy Matthews or a Miro, where it's like, oh, they're there. But how are they being used? And now Swerve right now is an absolute star, and that's because of his match against Hangman Page at Full Gear, uh, which was incredible. Um, Mike, can so, you do the dance? Can you do the, the? Can you do the dance? I can't. I can't do it. That's that's about there all. There you got. go. When he starts doing the hand thing, that's that's when he starts doing the hand thing. That's that's when he loses me. This is what, about what all gets the me is in my in my in my body right now. Is when Prince Nana goes and the beat drops and he starts. Spinning around, that's what I can't do quite yet. To this day, um, I didn't, I still didn't know his name until you just said it again. So, you good, didn't good know Prince you. Nana. I still, I still, tomorrow I'll forget his name. Like, that's just the way it Man. is. Dude, he, uh, I loved him in ROH and the, um, work he would do. So it was cool to see him back in AEW and he's perfect for Swerve. Like, he doesn't take away from Swerve. Like, some managers take away from the talent in the ring. But he's adding a certain flavor because once he started dancing to this song, that's where Swerve's mm -hmm. popularity really started taking off. Um, so excited to see him. Uh, excited to see him flourish. But, dude, if you look from top to bottom, the past year in wrestling has been wild. Like, you have so many moments to pick out. The Rock showing up on SmackDown in Colorado with Pat McAfee. Um, to The Rock showing up day one this year and beating up Jinder Mahal to what we saw in the Royal Rumble. Like, dude, wrestling's in a boom period right now. And so I think you and I are very fortunate that we get to have wrestling podcasts, get to have conversations like this. Because I'm sure in like five, ten years from now, we can look back on these episodes and we're like, whoa, what yeah. a time to be alive. It's it's hard to believe like nine, 10, 12 year old me would I, I would never leave my house. There's wrestling. When we, we've talked about this on this show too many times. I don't want to call it oversaturated, but there's wrestling on the TV every single night. I mean, you talk about things that have happened over the past year. Impact went back to TNA. And then they they fire, uh, I can't even say Scott his name, Demore. the president. Or they fought, yeah, they, fi they fire Scott Demore, and and there's not really anything come out about it yet. Um, you know, you, you talked about it, you know, last WrestleMania where we thought Cody was some of us, let's, let's, let's stay that. So some, some of us I thought that Cody was going to finish the story. I was on record to say that he was going to finish the story. Um, I'm just looking back at some of the wrestling shows that we did over the last year. I mean, you had a decent backlash pay-per-view, uh, the, the SummerSlam event, the WWE football was great. Survivor series was a good show. The, 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 um, war games that WWE put out. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's, 
it's easy to forget that we also lost Bray Wyatt last year. Um, you know, there were there were rumors swirling around. We did a whole episode about Bray Wyatt on the show because there were rumors swirling around that he was having creative issues and and they still weren't meeting eye to eye about what he wanted to do creatively and 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 just those stupid rumors and then you know come to find out that he had a heart condition uh that was sort of kicked off uh thanks to covid that ended up taking him away and i mean i was really excited about what they were going to do with bray wyatt when they had him doing the muscle man dance against bobby lashley before he had to be taken off tv before wrestlemania i was really excited to see where they were going i was thinking that Bray Wyatt could have been the one to take the title off of Roman Reigns somewhere down the line because he was the one that lost the title to Roman Reigns when Roman Reigns first won the Universal Championship, you know, two, three years ago, or I guess it was, it's almost four years ago now uh, because, you know, he left during the pandemic, came back and won the title and he hasn't been, you know, lost it since. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard to look back at the last year of pro wrestling and complain, kind of disregard the fact that we lost Bray Wyatt, but like you said, a lot of stuff happened and, and all wrestling companies I already mentioned TNA's rebirth. Uh, at, I mean, wasn't it Genesis that they, they became TNA again, which is really fitting. It, it was, um, uh, it was hard to kill hard to kill. Uh, yeah. Because TNA month. is hard to kill. Yeah. And it was one exactly. of those things. Um, um you, you have a lot, a lot of talent coming from new Japan over to the, to the, to the States. You've got, you know, the, the introduction of, of Will Ospreay to AEW at some point. Um, you know, they continue to work over. I mean, it's, if you talk about new Japan, think, you know, PJ's not on the show tonight, but when you think about new Japan, they, they launched an app where you can now watch new Japan world on your phone, on your TV, on your tablet, without having to go to a website and stream it from a website. That's a big deal when it comes to getting some sort of global picture of professional wrestling outside of WWE, because, you know, as you can probably attest to Mike, the, the wrestling fans are fickle. When they get stuck on something that they like watching, they don't. They refuse to watch anything else. When I was a kid, I remember flipping back and forth between Nitro and Raw, and and watching watching Goldberg knock off Hogan to win the world title, and going to Raw. I, mean, I can't remember the same thing that, that Raw had going on that night, but watch going over to Raw now that Nitro was off the air to see what Raw was doing or vice versa. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's wild knowing. Like you said, we're in a boom period for pro wrestling. And unfortunately, as adults, we don't, I don't think we, we enjoy it. And there are some adults out there who think it's still real to them. You know, that whole thing. Um, but it's I don't still think get, real to me. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I don't know if, if we truly get to enjoy it as much as, as, as kids do. Um, but I think if, if again, 20, take 22, 25 years off of me, I mean, I, I, like I said, I don't know if I leave the house. Wrestling is is so big, is so popular, and and like you said, um, you know, especially what's going on right now and where we're headed into WrestleMania season, it's really exciting stuff. Before we get into WWE talk, uh, let's shift gears and talk very briefly about AEW and Sting's last match. Uh, if, if you've been living under a rock uh, back, I believe it was September, Sting announced that uh, he would he would be wrestling his final match. In the Greensboro Coliseum on March 3rd, 2024, we didn't know what it was going to look like. But now the more we get to it, it looks as if we are going to get a tag team championship match where he and Darby Allen are set to defend the tag team titles against the Young Bucks who are, are leaning into this heel EVP gimmick, uh, the same EVP gimmick that, that caused uh, Brutus, I'm sorry, not Brutus Beefcake, Ahmed Beefcake, uh, to leave AEW in the first place. And if you don't get that reference, that's okay. PJ, Steven, and I do, because that's a name that we don't say on the show. Um, but, Mike, let me ask you a question. Did you need to put a title on Sting so that he could lose it in his final match? So this is where I'm conflicted, right? So I am going to Revolution in Greensboro, it's an hour and a half away. Like it's Sting's last match. That is one of the people I do want to see live. Um, I get it. I'm I'm super excited about it. But I get they're doing this whole like ranking system where records matter now again after two years of them not mattering. And so Sting and Darby are undefeated. So let's 
give Sting and Darby a title shot, but then Sting and Darby win the titles from Ricky Starks and Big Bill, who I thought should have never taken it from FTR in the first place. And now you're going to put Sting and Darby presumably in the main event of AEW Revolution against the Young Bucks and the heel EVPs. Dude, you've put yourself in a really difficult situation because everyone who is going to the Greensboro Coliseum is going there for one reason, one reason only. That's to see Sting. They mm -hmm. want the nice send-off. They want Sting to go out on top, everything. Tony Khan could literally throw a curveball and Sting and Darby win. Sting for forfeits his half. Darby chooses a new partner. Or they just do new tag team champions in general. But if you have the final scene of AEW Revolution, of the Young Bucks pinning Sting to win the AEW World Tag Titles, a push that they don't necessarily need, dude, we're going to go back to the 70s and 80s when they throw trash in the ring. Like, I'm, I'm going to be up, up nosebleeds, whatever. That's not going to be me. Don't throw me out of the arena. I love my wrestling very much. But it's, I'm expecting a hostile environment if they do the route of Sting losing his final match in Greensboro. So uh, I wish PJ was here. So so let me ask you a question then. You don't feel – PJ is a, is a huge advocate that the wrestlers are supposed to go out on their back. Stone Cold's last official match prior to WrestleMania a couple years ago that he hated, um, not he being Austin, he being PJ. Um, Austin finally lost at WrestleMania to The Rock. Um, Cena lost his final match in WWE. It might be his final match ever. Until the uh, until the rumor that The Rock was going to wrestle Roman Reigns, his last match was a loss to John Cena. Um, so are you in the minority that believe that as a wrestler to end your career, you don't have to go out on your back as many of them believe that they should? I, th I think you can, but does the story dictate it? Are you telling me you kept the Young Bucks away from Sting for three, four years or so? just for the Young Bucks to go over on Sting. It, it, this isn't like they're putting a younger tag team over. I mean, they're, like, they're, it, they're it's the, the young EVPs. Bucks. They're the EVPs, though. I mean, I'm not sure if they have still have booking power. I would imagine they would. So, I mean, so you you feel like it's... I don't know. I don't even know where and to start also, with the questions. Well, here, like, if you were going to have Sting lose his final match, why not have him wrestle Darby? Is like a passing of the torch. That could work. That way, fans aren't super upset that Darby beat Sting because he's been there. The story's there. But just for the Young Bucks to kind of come in and insert themselves, not only into Sting's last match, but also into a tag team title match. And this is coming from a guy who likes the Young Bucks. Who The Young Bucks really got me into New Japan pro wrestling years back with the Bullet Club. But I just... I really believe this is the wrong route to go, assuming that Sting loses his final match. So Sting made a Sting made a point that he wanted to work with the Young Bucks. Like he was very appreciative of what of the opportunities that they provided him in AEW, and so he wanted them incorporated in his last match in some form or fashion. But I don't know if we're going to go back to like Hogan joining the NWO and them throwing the trash in the ring because the Young Bucks will be gone. And Sting will have his his swan song, so to speak. And I don't think that the fans want to throw trash at Sting as he's on his way out the door. Um, having said that, you talked about why not Sting wrestle Darby Allen for his last match. I'm not disagreeing with that. But this is Sting's last match. It doesn't say his retirement match. It just says his last match. Does that mean it's his last match in AEW? Do you think he goes he's somewhere else to have... Do you, do you think he goes somewhere else to have one final match with, like he does that the Ric Flair tour where he, this is his last match in AEW, but you know he was integral in the growing of TNA. Maybe he goes back to have a one off with somebody in TNA as a one on one match. Uh, do, I mean, do you? So do you absolutely think this is Sting's retirement? This is it. This is the last thing that Sting ever does in the ring. I think this is the final match of Sting's career, AEW you, or anything else. Like, do you think? I'll, do you think he sticks around? Like, do you think he sticks around and just manages Darby Allen, or this is this is Sting's final hoorah? Not just match, 
but Sting will no longer ever be on a wrestling program ever again. I think he will be on a wrestling program in some fashion, whether that's an authority figure or a manager. Like, I can totally see that route, um, especially with Sting's kids older. Are they trained to become wrestlers? Could he, like, be involved in a story with them? But I don't see TNA being an option. I'm honestly really upset with TNA. No, more importantly, I'm more upset with Anthem right now for firing Scott Demore. Um, especially with the reports being that it was over like money. And I'm just so like, me, come on, guys. Let me ask you let me ask you another question about Sting here. I'm gonna throw a really, really fat hypothetical that's not going to happen. But I literally just came up with my head, so I gotta throw it out there. Of course. What if Darby out Al- what if Darby Allen starts the match and he, he wrestles the whole match and every time he tries to tag Sting in? Sting gets pulled off the apron, so he never gets to come in. And finally, Sting has the opportunity to come in, and he turns on Darby. And we get a heel Sting to manage the Young Bucks as, like, main event mafia Sting, but with Nicholas and, what can I say, is it the, the Matthew? Bro- Nicholas and Matthew Jackson. How, how would you feel if, if we went that direction, where his last match was a swerve on everybody? <laughs> I just love that we're on a podcast and we're recording right now. And so that means Ryan doesn't necessarily have a filter. He doesn't like say this over the course of a work day to his co- colleagues all. or whatever. That way they can tell him that's a dumb idea. So he never I shares it on the podcast. Said, I literally just said that the idea just came to my head. And, I think it'd be and then sometimes you don't have to say it because it's such a bad idea. Final question that I'm going to ask you about Sting because they've got a really sweet, t- really sweet T-shirt over on Shop AEW where they've got the half and half um, Sting with the black and white and like the green face paint, like the Surfer Sting. Would you prefer? Now, granted, it doesn't fit the uh, it doesn't fit the gimmick with Darby Allen, right? Like the dark, like the emo type character. But would you have preferred Sting to go back to Surfer Sting for his final match, even if he can't do like the updo because of the you know the receding hairline? Um, he could have like dyed it blonde, slicked it back, and uh, and and done the the colorful face paint. Are you are you? Would you have preferred that, or or do you think we're going to see that? Like, what are your thoughts on on him ending his career as as quote unquote Crow Sting here uh, in a tag team title match that he shouldn't even be involved in because they had no reason to put a tag title. Yeah, I'm still I'm still not happy with that decision to put tag tiles on them. Uh, I saw the T-shirt; it was super cool. Um, for me, in my lifetime, Sting has always been the Crow Sting. Like, yeah, that's right. I, I forgot your like I'm like mid twenties, so like I never all my like Surfer Sting have been on rewatches and retapes. Um, so I've I've liked the WCW. My main uh, focus on Sting was TNA with the main event mafia and stuff. Um, I could totally see him doing like half and half face paint or have Sting come out in the crow and Darby try the uh, surfer face paint for a night since he is I, gone. You know what? Uh, this is the new Japan booking in me that, that PJ's kind of helped me help lure me to. Let Sting get hurt. That's- let let Sting get hurt. They have to take him to the back. And then he comes out with new face paint, like he come like the great Muda did, um, where all of a sudden he comes up as an as a, as a as an alter ego, a different Sting, and he's hurried up and and done some some quick new face paint, and we get Surfer Sting. To, I don't I don't know. There's a way that you can work it, but um, Sting's last match, the Greenboro Greensboro Coliseum at AEW Revolution, March third, twenty twenty four. Uh, free plug for them because AEW sure as hell ain't paying me on the show. Um, a couple quick Fast. quick notes. We don't we don't have to spend a whole lot of time on this. Uh, Kazuchika Okada has merchandise pulled from ProWrestlingTees.com. Generally speaking, most of the people that have have their their gear online uh, still go to work for a company like TNA AEW. Okada is done in a, in, in New Japan very soon. Do you think Okada is AEW bound? I think that would be an excellent uh, moment to do at AEW Revolution in the Greensboro Coliseum March 3rd where somebody's going to be in attendance and would like to have their money's worth just 
FYI, if Tony Khan's watching this and decides to sponsor <laughs> tap outs and touchdowns. Um, I think Okada to AEW makes sense. TNA is super small. WWE, I even heard WWE thought about putting him in NXT because of the CW deal. And I'm just like, it doesn't really fit there. Um, Okada has actually I mean, wrestled a few matches. Oh, no. Don't tell me. Nakamura did it. Yeah, but you could also make the argument they wasted part of his prime years in NXT. I'm not just dis- listen. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that Okada could have a run in NXT. I think he should go to the main roster. The problem is, is that most of the Japanese wrestlers that get brought over in the past have never learned proper English, and so it's hard for the American fan base that doesn't appreciate what they did in Japan to grab onto someone like Okada, someone like Nakamura. Asuka, Kyrie Sane, uh, Io, Io Sky or Io Shirai for that matter. But I think in a company like AEW, he fits better. But the problem here lies again that you just you just mentioned earlier when we talked about about Swerf Strickland. They've got guys. I mean, the roster stacked in AEW with a bunch of old guys. You got the Hardy Boys that have no business in the in the ring anymore. You've got Edge and Christian, who Edge, you know, you can say Adam Copeland's doing what he's doing and he looks great. And by all means, let him have it. And Christian's probably doing some of the best work in his career. But, I mean, they're getting FaceTime on the screen. But you got to think about guys like Keith Lee, guys like Buddy Murphy, or uh, Buddy, Buddy, whatever you, whatever they call him, AW, Buddy Matthews. Uh, you, you had the House of Black with the trios titles for a while. That's gone. Uh, you know, there's, there's so many guys. Miro was another one. There's so many guys in AEW that are just lost in the shuffle. It feels like they're just throwing darts at a dartboard and finding what sticks. And and sort of like booking on the fly in in AEW like WCW tried to do with with that new revolution uh, in late '99, early 2000 in WCW. So listen, I, I'm with you. I, 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 if I'm going to Greensboro, I'd be excited if Okada showed up. I don't think it's going to happen. What I do think it might be able to happen is uh, as as the the pay per view was entitled Revolution. Um, you could have the introduction of one Mercedes Monet. Now they're also they're also kind of hinting that she'll be at the Boston premiere for, for AEW. Um, Boston with the with the way that they had like the S and, and the T, like you know, look sort of tease the fact that the the former uh, Sasha Banks could show up. Uh, I think it's a no brainer. Sasha Banks is 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 all elite, correct? Yeah, especially when you put out that flyer of B O S S. T O N Boston, um, yeah. with the money signs w- used as the S's, like that's that's like, hey, come to Boston. Now, I hope they introduce her at Revolution, but part of me thinks they're going they're going to wait to introduce her in Boston because um, that, that is her home crowd. So yeah, that that only makes sense. Um, so the Revolution surprise could be Okada, and I hope it is because. The AEW fan base and Tony Khan especially like appreciate that New Japan aspect that WWE fans might not necessarily get without lack of a better word. No, I agree. Um, we got the, we got a, we got some WWE talking to get to, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, talking about the next thing in AEW. MJF has not been seen since he lost the world title. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. There's an article that that's actually roaming uh, the the eight, the the wrestling quote unquote dirt sheets about MJF accusing Cody Rhodes of stealing his thunder uh, back um, at Revolution 2020, uh, considering that Cody um, had the I guess came out with a neck tattoo, um, which is a story in and of itself. Um, this is a direct quote, I believe, from Britt Baker, uh, and it reads, at the time, MJF, I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say it because, you know, um, he felt that Cody was trying to steal his thunder because they were in a feud at the pay-per-view. Um, but that being said, that's a little weird considering, like, they were, they're supposed to be close buds, um, and we still, we, like I said, we haven't seen MJF. Uh, what do you make of the story and how long do you think it is? Do, do we go before we see MJF back in AEW or anywhere for that matter? Well, it was well known that MJF uh, had that shoulder injury, I believe a torn labrum. Um, so it obviously made sense for World's End for him to get hurt, 
you know, lose the title and then be off TV for a while. Um, I don't think he's going to WWE or anything like that. Um, but when MJF's fully healthy, I think he comes back. And in the meantime, this Undisputed Kingdom's kind of just like hovering right now. They don't exactly have anything to sink their teeth into. Roger Strong probably going to Revolution, wrestling Orange Cassidy. Uh, I believe that's been made official for Revolution for the uh, International Championship. But other than that, like, they had so much momentum and nothing's really stuck. I mean, there's the acclaimed and Bullet Club Gold trying to go after him, but it doesn't really have that same feel. Um, I hope to see MJF back soon. He is a big ratings grab for AW anytime he's on TV. Like, everybody's... When you're, like, watching a wrestling show and you're, like, on your phone and you're just, like, browsing and whatever... And then MJF's music hits. Take the phone, you put it face down, and you listen to what MJF has to say. That's it. Yeah, I don't disagree. I'm I'm kind of hoping that we get him sooner rather than later as well. Um, I'll, I'll give you the, the matches that are listed at least on Wikipedia for for Revolution. It still says Sting and Darby Allen with Ric Flair versus TBA. Maybe Ric Flair turns on Sting one last time and helps the Young Bucks win the tag titles, like you said. Oh the undisputed. Uh, uh, Roderick Strong uh, with the Undisputed Kingdom taking on Orange Cassidy for the International Championship. You got Samoa Joe, Hangman Page, is worth circling for the AEW World Title. Timeless Tony Storm uh, taking on Deanna Perrazzo for the AEW World, Women's World Championship. Eddie Kingston versus Brian Danielson for the Continental Crown Championship. Um, I, I It looks like it's it's not just that. It might be um, for the Ring of Honor World Championship and uh, the New Japan so, Strong Openweight Championship. I don't, I don't even know how that goes, and that shows how much I've been watching. If Danielson loses, he has to shake Eddie Kingston's hand. That sounds like a, a stupid, like, Viagra and a pole match all at WCW. Oh, and then finally, they, had to, um, they had to do that a couple years ago with Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho, too. That's right, yeah. That's, that's just such a dumb concept. And then finally... Christian Cage taking on Adam Copeland or Daniel Garcia for the AEW TNT Championship. Uh, so those are the only six matches listed on the card. AEW shows tend to go pretty long, uh, but that's what you got looking forward to with AEW coming up next month. Let's get over some WWE news. We got about a little less than 30 minutes left in the show here, and we're going straight through it like the wrestling show last week, like the wrestling show this week. No ads. We're going to run straight through the shows. WrestleMania 40 had a press conference in Las Vegas last week. And I, the main reason I wanted to have the show was to talk about this press conference because what a press conference it was. Like, it 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 checked all the boxes. It was more or less like a like – someone. I heard somebody call it a SmackDown skit. It was, it was straight, like, cinema. It was straight theater. And it, it, was, it was just great theater. Let's start off. Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley teased. The old, the old line, because it, uh, Rhea Ripley's, I guess her, her catchphrase now is, because mommy always winds on top. Becky Lynch says she's going to learn how to be a bottom. Love the word play. Uh, you think we're going to get Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley at, at, at WrestleMania 40? Dude, 100% confirmed yeah. at the press conference. Yeah. Like, it, that is the safest bet in the world. Unless something, like, catastrophic or tragic happens with, like, an injury or whatever. I mean, WrestleMania season's already had those. Ahmed Beefcake. Other controversy somewhere else. I don't know if we can. You don't list say that, that name, name on the show. You don't say that oh, name on the show. Now I, right. now, I, now I got to edit the show, Michael. I wanted to put this straight to Spotify and YouTube. And now I've got to go and edit the show uh, with, with my, uh, my sound drop. What a jerk. Come I'm on, sorry, man. dude. I tried. I pride myself in not cussing on the show. I I let one slip. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so mad. I, I'm so that, mad. That, right that now. is my apologies. I hope I get invited back to tap outs and touchdowns, but um, unfortunately, probably not. Um, but I mean, I meanwhile, say, I'm just I'm I'm putting timestamps so I can go and 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 bleep out the bad word that you said. Please go. Please go. <laughs> I'm I'm so I'm so sorry, but in terms of Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley, um, hundred percent confirmed. I know we're getting a women's chamber match in Australia, but there's there's no doubt. The only doubt I had was potentially them doing Nia Jax, 
But they're doing Nia versus Rhea in Australia, which is perfect because both are heels. But Nia's so hated that Rhea's going to get cheered in her hometown anyways. And you get that match out of the way. Rhea beats Nia. And they've kept Rhea and Becky apart for a year now. It, it has to happen at WrestleMania. Is Rhea really a heel, though? Like, she's in she's in a heel she's faction, a but she still, she still gets cheered by the crowd every single night. I'm with you, though. There's no doubt in my mind. If it was, if you bet a hundred to win a hundred and one, you're betting a hundred. Like it's just, it's just the way that it goes. Like there's no way it doesn't happen. I thought maybe they tried to throw Jade Cargill in the mix, but we haven't seen her since she debuted at the Rumble, so I'm not sure what they're doing uh, with her. But nevertheless, um, it, they they tease that, and now now sort of the real discussion happens where we sort of expected something big to happen at this press conference. It was it was. You know, you had to line up everybody that was going to be there. Uh, the Rock was going to be there. Roman was going to be there. The week prior on SmackDown, Cody Rhodes seemingly passed the torch and gave it back to The Rock to challenge Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. And the crowd loved it on SmackDown. And then the internet community got a hold of it and absolutely took a dump on it. Uh, you know, worst. this is a match. This is a match that, and I again, I hate that, P, that PJ isn't here because he's he's opposed to us with this thought that we don't need the Rock versus Roman. We never did, and I'm not disagreeing with that point. But the fans clamored for it for so long, and now that they they almost got it, they they about crapped their pants. Um, you know, again, go to the press conference. You know, it was all set up. They have the 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 Anoy family tree. Uh, it's all about the bloodline. Rock versus Rock versus Reigns, and then Cody comes and interrupted. I think. At one point, uh, Seth Rollins interrupted Roman's uh, rant about being, you know, the champ and and Roman. I don't understand the concept about burying the other title because that's what each other are doing. And and I just I, I don't know if I agree with that. But nevertheless, uh, Cody comes out, interrupts them. They start talking crap about his dad. He talks crap about them or about their family and how their family would be ashamed of them. And then uh, and after he said that he's he's going to challenge Roman Reigns to once again finish his story. Uh, and then you know we end the, we in the press conference with with the Rock slapping Cody Rhodes in the face, and a and a pretty uh, pretty profane tirade uh, backstage that was uh, it, it felt like WWF nineteen ninety seven ninety eight. We've been doing some of those uh, time machine episodes for PJ Stephen on the show. Michael, did you expect to see what we got at the press conference? How were you, how was your feeling about uh, how did you feel about WrestleMania and the way that the direction it was headed after watching this press conference last Thursday? So you just recapped a lot because a lot happened in the week. So with SmackDown and The Rock showing up face Roman, dude, that is the moment we've waited for for four years. Ever since Roman called himself the head of the table and the tribal chief in August of 2020 when he returned and won the universal title from Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt, dude, that was the match, The Rock versus Roman. Build Roman up. Have Roman beat The Rock, and then whoever comes up next, whether that be Cody or maybe that Solo Sokoa. I mentioned that on an article on Sports Carolina Monthly, um, a place that you know Des puts out articles for, and I, a pro wrestling beat writer. Thank you, appreciate that. Yeah. Hope, hope Des appreciates that too. Um, maybe it's Solo, but it has to happen after Roman beats The Rock, and then. We finally get that showdown, and dude, SmackDown fans loved it, ate it up. It was awesome. And the IWC, I hate the internet wrestling community. I am so sorry if you are listening to this and you're taking offense to this because you, you are should. a crybaby. You should. You should, you should take should. offense to it. You you're baby Cody back. crybaby. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Because there, there was a story there, and just because your guy – just because your guy isn't getting a dial shot when you want him to, even though it is in the story for him to eventually win the WWE Championship, whenever that may be, you just crapped on a dream match that we may or may not ever get. I mean, we, we started the show talking about Bray Wyatt and his unfortunate passing and how much we expected for that character to have moving forward that we never got. You have The Rock, who has one of the busiest Hollywood schedules slash 
USFL, XFL, UFL, whatever owner. And I swear he's in like four or five other different projects. Now he's on the TKO board. Like he has so much on his plate and it's only going to get more and more as they get out of this rider strike and, you know, move past all that. You have the opportunity to have the rock versus Roman reigns at WrestleMania 40. One of the biggest WrestleManias of all time. They always go big for 40, 35 with Becky Lynch, 30 with Daniel Bryan, 25 with Taker, Michaels 20 with that triple threat main event that I probably can't even name one of those guys or else I'll get bleeped out again. Oh like, no, that, that's fine. That's, that's, that's different. <laughs> that's we, we, that's, just, despite, despite the fact that he murdered his family, Chris <laughs> Benoit was, 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 was on that show. We, we say his name despite, wow. uh, you know, his, his heinous crime. No, listen, I'm right there with you, man. Uh, it's something that was clamored for, for, for years, absolute years. The Rock is 51 years old. He's not getting any younger. Now, granted, he's probably in the best shape of anybody who's not a wrestler anymore. Um, you know, he stayed healthy because he, he sort of left so young. But I'm with you. We don't know if we're going to get this match. Between his busyness and his age, we just we don't know. And uh, there's a difference between what happened with Yesel Mania and Daniel Bryan versus what's happening now. They brought Batista back, uh, who is a legend. You know, granted, he's a legend. He, you know, he's, he was a great entertainer. I, I'm not. A, I'm not going to dog Batista at all. Uh, but the reason that WrestleMania was so big was because Ahmed Beefcake left the company for the same reason that the fans had their had their say about Daniel Bryan. And granted, the the crowd is was not as loud about Cody Rhodes as they were about Yeslamania. They they cried and got the... Now, listen, the WWE could be very well working us right now. Like, this might have been the plan all along. And that's what I like to believe. I like to think that now that there's there's people who know what they're doing and they're not trying to, like, feed their own ego and, like, have their own action figures to do and, and do their bidding and say what they want them to say. Now they've got some people that actually care about pro wrestling. Um making decisions i'd like to think that uh that, that this was the plan all along um i don't know but is it we again that's so so here's here's the deal on this wrestling finale of season five of this show i've said this again i've said this before and i'll say it again the beauty of what the beauty of pro wrestling what makes pro wrestling so fun is speculation you don't know if this was the plan you don't know if Cody is going to go on to finish the story because the other side of it is you wonder if Roman's going to hold the title to break uh, Hulk Hogan's record. You don't know if we were if, if you still don't know if we're going to get Rock and Roman on night two after Cody loses to Roman night one. We don't know if if we're going to get a tag team oh, match. That was, that was yeah, backwards. we don't know. If we're going to get a, a match between uh, with Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes taking on Rock and Reigns, because they, they you could be teasing that as well. We don't know if The Rock, despite how busy he is, is now going to be involved in a long-term storyline, a la Trish Stratus was last year, uh, that goes into Survivor Series where he goes away. Um, and then comes back and 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 maybe you know wrestles at next WrestleMania and for his his official last hurrah in the wrestling business. We don't know, and that's what makes pro wrestling so fun is because if it if if, if pro wrestling becomes too predictable, why are you going to watch something when you know what's going to happen? People watch The Walking Dead because they wanted to see who Negan was going to bash with a bat at the end of that season, at the beginning of the next season. They bad wanted example, to know, but okay, it's not a bad example. People I tuned like in. Dead. Well, I don't care if you like Walking Dead. This the point remains. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you like. Just like Triple H said, it doesn't matter if you like the decisions or not. So, dude. Um, okay. Can I speaking of can I throw speaking that? of which? Yeah. Go ahead, because I was going to say that like it's 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 unfortunate. Obviously for Triple H, but it's unfortunate for me as a fan that Triple H can't get back in the ring because this is setting up perfectly for one final match for Triple H and The Rock. That would be awesome. But uh, I think that might have been what you said, and I saw your thunder. Yeah, because um, I know there's way too much to cover with, like, the press conference that 
to answer your original question, absolutely swerved me. Um, I was like, whoa, and that that lived up to expectations and then exceeded them. But listening to Triple H on Friday when I was there at the Spectrum Center, I was like, oh my gosh, like Triple H, I don't know what he's doing, but he's becoming an on-screen figure again, which is exciting. And you don't know where he lands. Is Triple H going to back Cody? Is Rock going to back Roman at WrestleMania? And then, uh, you, there again, there's so many possibilities with that um, that you just, you just don't know. But, man, I would love for one more Triple H match. We can't have it, but, man, what, what, a, what a match it would be. It's also really fun to see that The Rock is, is it's everything is rumored the fact that The Rock is going full swing back into this heel mode like he did when he was Hollywood Rock. And all I care about at this point now is bringing back the Hollywood Rock theme. We didn't get it long enough back then. But Can I want the that rock Hollywood concert? Rock theme. I'm sure, like, give us rock concerts. I don't care. What I want is The Rock's Hollywood theme back. It was the it was the, the to me my favorite theme theme music that the rock ever came out to. I, I Michael, I, you may not have been around at that point. Do you ever remember hearing the rock's Hollywood theme song? It's 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 fire. I've heard and this. I I hope they bring it back with with the rock's new newfound heel turn. Uh we're 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 running up against it. I'm gonna try to keep us an hour to 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 actually end the end season five wrestling's episodes. Uh, under time because we've gone over so many times throughout the year. Uh, so let's go in the WrestleMania 40 preview here on the show. Uh, there's a few matches, only a few matches that are listed on the card. Again, according to Wikipedia and what we've seen on TV, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, for the undisputed WWE Championship. You've got Bailey, the Women's Royal Rumble winner, taking on EO Sky for the WWE Women's Championship. That is a fun storyline, uh, considering that she came out and spoke Japanese. On, on SmackDown when she decided she was going to challenge EO. And then, of course, you've got Seth Rollins. We don't know who he's going to uh, face at WrestleMania. And then Rhea Ripley more than likely taking on Becky Lynch. Uh, so a couple of questions I want to pose. Um, let's, let's, start off with, uh, let's start off with Seth, with Seth Rollins. Who does, uh, who does one Seth Rollins take on for the World Heavyweight Championship? at WrestleMania with the injury to Ahmed Beefcake. Dude, I thought it was going to be Sami Zayn, and they lost to Randy Orton this past Friday on SmackDown, so I'm, like, caught between there. It could be Drew McIntyre, but if Drew hasn't re-signed, I don't think they actually put Drew in that spot. You know? Like, do they really put it. Drew in the main event of night one? <laughs> Drew is doing some of his best work in years. He is. I mean, you, but you cannot tell me that he... Petty Drew McIntyre is my favorite Drew McIntyre of all time. If Dude, I wasn't I, on like, a, like a, a, a spending freeze with WWE Shop, um, and that's a story for another day too, uh, but I would buy that shirt where he's got uh, Ahmed Beefcake's headstone uh, where it says it's his WrestleMania moment for 2024. Um, with with Drew McIntyre with a thumbs up next to it, it's it's phenomenal. It, I mean, listen, I I agree. I like him. I've met him in an elevator, and he like towered over me by like a foot and a half. But yeah, he's like, like six foot seven, six foot eight, something like that. Yeah, he's like he's freakishly tall. But dude, like if he's not resigned, do you give him a WrestleMania main event and then let him walk a month or two later to AW? Like unless he you has. Want Put ink on paper. He doesn't need to be in the main event of WrestleMania. Would you prefer him or Randy Orton to win the title off of Seth? Because Seth is going to have to have surgery. Would you prefer Drew McIntyre without a contract to win the title? Or Randy Orton uh, tying John Cena's record? Someone who I doesn't would, need the title to, to, to beat Seth Rollins. I don't think it will be Randy Orton. And we have to see how these Elimination Chamber qualifying matches really line up. Um, but Orton's not like the worst idea in the world. Coming back after 18 months of, of a back injury, and he may have had to retire, but now he's back. But honestly, could, could we? can we just get Damian Priest to cash in 
on Seth Rollins and do Heist of the Century 2 on the guy who created the Heist of the Century in the first place? Can't we just have Damian Priest cash in at WrestleMania and be the guy? I'm wondering... I'm wondering if they're not going to let him be the one person that never gets to cash it in. Like, that's Please all I can no. think about. Or, no. or McIntyre wins. Or McIntyre wins and Priest cashes in on McIntyre. And that's how you get the title on and off of him. Um, another thought came to my mind is uh, is LA Knight. I mean, you're, you'd be flipping Cody to SmackDown to get him to, you know, feud with Roman. And LA Knight was the hottest guy in wrestling for the last few months. Uh, give him an opportunity to take the title off of Seth Rollins. Because, uh, again, I you're going really to have like to. Um, here's, here's my thought process is that we're, nobody's talking about I don't even know if he's in the chamber. I was trying to look while we were doing the show to see who else is still alive for the Elimination Chamber qualifier. But Gunther. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the, the idea that Gunther was supposed to take on Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And we considering can say Brock Lesnar... Yeah, we can say that name because we haven't heard anything like concrete come out about him yet. But Brock Lesnar was obviously tied to Voldemort's... Uh, I'm going to call him Voldemort now. Voldemort's uh, lawsuit. Um, and so they're they're slowly kind of separating themselves from Brock Lesnar like they did one Hulk Hogan a few years ago. So what are, what are the plans for Gunther? Maybe Gunther wins... The elimination chamber and he he you know we we have a uh an ultimate warrior intercontinental championship up against the world championship and so he never loses the intercontinental championship and he just he pulls a goldberg wins the world title and and relinquishes the intercontinental title and goes forward uh i mean having said that do you think that that gunther will lose the intercontinental championship at wrestlemania or before wrestlemania with the opportunity for him to to compete for the world title So, I love the idea of Gunther getting his opportunity. I really do. And there was a part of me who really believed it would be WrestleMania. But we can't forget, Bash in Berlin is this August. That would be the perfect time to capitalize on Gunther getting his first world title opportunity. So, you can't can't put all your eggs in the basket here at WrestleMania. Um, I think Gunther loses the title at WrestleMania. Because that would make most sense. Give him a few months away from the Aaron Cottonell title. Um, who he loses to, I don't know. Um, I really wish Big E was healthy because it would make sense. Imperium's feuding with New Day right now. If Big E were to make a big triumphant return and challenge Gunther for the Aaron Cottonell title at WrestleMania 40, like, does Big E need the push? No, but what a moment that would live in the history of time. If Big E returned from injury to beat Gunther for the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania 40. I love I love the idea. We'll see what happens there. Um, we talked about Okada potentially showing up at AW. Is there a possibility? Maybe he debuts like Cody did a few years ago at WrestleMania when he came back. You think there's an opportunity to, especially if, like let's say Gunther creates an open challenge for the Intercontinental Championship. Out comes Kazuchika Okada. Is there anybody that you would like to see or that you think we might see make a surprise return uh, at WrestleMania or just make a surprise appearance at WrestleMania in general? If it if it is Okada, and I said early in the show, I think Okada is going to AEW and debuts in Greensboro at Revolution. Um, if Okada were to come out, I think it would be perfect because Sami Zayn is kind of having a similar route with like, Where's his WrestleMania that Seth Rollins did a few years ago when Cody Rhodes came back? Mm-hmm. So could Sami Zayn open and is- issue an open challenge at WrestleMania, and then could Zuchko gotta come out? Because at that point, that's that's your introduction to K- Zuchko Kata. If you're the casual WWE fan, uh, casual WWE the- fans welcomed Cody back with open arms. Yeah, yeah, but, but do you Sammy feed Zane Sammy Zayn to somebody else? Do you feed Sami Zayn to somebody else? Like they're they're making him they're they're trying to put him back down to being that ultimate underdog again. Oh, listen, I like the idea, but you can't have Okada come out and lose his first match on WWE TV at WrestleMania. I just no. I can't see that happening. Okada um, would win. I, I think we get Okada. I also think that with Bailey basically going up against all of um all of of damage control, damage control. I think there's going to be a surprise return for somebody. 
to have Bailey's back. I don't think it's going to be Charlotte Flair because she's injured, but I think somebody's going to be there. Maybe, maybe Trinity or I'm sorry, um, Naomi comes, comes out and helps Bailey in that, in that women's championship match. So we'll see what happens there. Um, matches that you, that aren't being announced that you expect to see. I think we both expect the build for Jimmy versus Jay to happen at some point in the very near future. Is mm-hmm. there any other match that hasn't been like really hinted that you expect to see? I mean, we haven't talked about tag title matches. I don't want to talk about the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Is there anything you're expecting to see on WrestleMania that has not yet been announced? So what I would really love to see is you mentioned tag titles, Okay. I would love to see the Judgment Day hold the tag team titles until WrestleMania where they wrestle the tag team of The Miz and R-Truth. R-Truth is 55 years old, and he looks like that. I mean, I mean Google him R-Truth after R-Truth doesn't show. age. He hasn't aged He does not So and my concern for- with that is with, with, with Maurice's, uh, unfortunately, Mar- I don't know if you saw the news about Maurice this week, was diagnosed with a, with a rare... Um, tumor where she's basically going to have to get a full hysterectomy because they're they're seeing um, some some cancerous stuff. I'm not sure if the Miz is going to be able to be around uh, with with what's going on with Maurice. I'm, I love you that with that with that standpoint. I think there's so many tag teams that you could pull a WrestleMania 35 and you could do another four way ladder match for the tag titles uh, where you have maybe a an Alpha Academy Creed Brothers um, Creed Brothers the Judgment Day. And I wouldn't throw the New Day in there, but there's another tag team you can throw in there. Um, I, I think that's going to be the safest way to go because they're just we we every every there's a cycle of it. There's a, a cycle of there's not enough tag teams, so there's too many tag teams, and there's just so many right now that it's hard to leave any of them out. And so I would I would per- personally love to see a ladder match for the tag titles uh, once again at WrestleMania. Any, I mean, we're, we're talking Logan Paul, still the United States champion. Do you see him? To, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to see him defended at WrestleMania. Any any potential opponents you can see for for the U.S. title? So I really like your idea of L.A. Knight going to wrestle Seth Rollins. But if L.A. Knight's not competing for the World Heavyweight title, I think the easy answer is the United States title versus Logan Paul. You can get some promos back and forth throughout the time. Um, another thing to point out, Bianca Belair has been on all the WrestleMania promotional posters. She just got a new Hulu show. She was at the press conference, and nobody really came out to challenge her. Dude, I think this would be the perfect time to have Jade Cargill versus Bianca Belair. See, I was going to go the opposite direction. I was thinking the opposite direction. So you have the women's tag titles. They need they need, they need, need challengers. And so Bianca Belair comes out because she's got unfinished business with damage control. And she needs a partner. Here comes Jake Cargill, and now we get new tag champions: Jake Cargill and Rhea Ripley, and, and Rhea Ripley, and uh, and Bianca Belair. I think that'd be phenomenal. Um, we're up against it, so there's there's two more questions that we have to ask. One: Does Cody finally finish the story? I say no. Michael Davis, what say you? I think it would be so funny if Cody went to two straight WrestleManias and didn't finish the story. That way the Cody crybabies get a taste of their mess. And, and then have Cody come back and win the Royal Rumble next year, the first ever person to win back-to-back-to-back Royal Rumbles. So I I think he loses because I truly believe that, that Roman Reigns will break Hulk Hogan's record. I truly believe it. Um, Which is, it makes it all the more funny that they cried to get Cody Rhodes versus Roman and he's still going to lose. Um, I think you could, you could turn it in a, a standpoint of, the Rock and Roman are, are angry that Cody is is impending on, impeding on their deal, and Rock Rock and Roman want to wrestle. Well, they want to have it out. So if the Roman can beat Cody Rhodes on night one, then he will get the Rock on night two, and I think that's how we get there. So we get both matches. Um, and you know, my next question was going to be, how does the Rock play into the storyline? I think that's exactly how you do it. Um, I don't see you having the Rock come out. And just be a manager for Roman Reigns with all the all the the, the fanfare and the pomp and circumstance behind it. Um, I think that's how you get Rock versus Roman anyway, which is again, it's going to be phenomenal for the internet wrestling community to boo that match out of the stadium, considering that you got Cody versus Roman, and and if and if maybe the Rock screws Cody out of it, 
Uh, and, and again, that's because that's what he wants. He wants Roman in the title. And so I don't know. I'm curious to see it because, again, we talked about it earlier here on this show that the best part about pro wrestling is when it's unpredictable. And right now we have no idea what is coming with, uh, with WrestleMania. Speaking of not knowing what's coming, this is the end of season five of the wrestling episodes of Tap House and Touchdowns. Later on this week, we will have the final show of season five of the football shows. Baker Bill and I are going to talk about the uh, this past weekend Super Bowl and look ahead to the UFL. And then we're going to go on hiatus for a few weeks uh, before we, we come back with our UFL primer uh, in March. Uh, but before we sign off, um, we do need to make sure we thank Michael Davis for being, out, being here. If you want to go follow him on social media, follow him on Instagram at out of pocket underscore TRSR. That's O U T T A pocket underscore TRSR and at drop the mic wrestling. Mike, thanks for being here, man. I listen, season six, I'm probably going to have you have you more uh, on here a little more. And I, I genuinely appreciate you being here on such short notice tonight. Hey, of course, anytime I get to talk wrestling with you, it's a uh, super fun. Uh, excited to do the wrestling podcast this week and then also the cat cave with you that drops later this week oh yeah i was getting there you, you're jumping ahead but that's okay if you want to make sure you follow me on social media you can follow me on twitter or x at tap outs and tds facebook.com slash tap outs and touchdowns make sure you go give us a follow we're aiming for our first thousand followers after a really big growing year in season five um, and, and as Michael mentioned, go follow our social media for our Carolina Panther show, the cat cave on Instagram and X at the cat cave underscore FFSN or facebook.com slash the cat cave FFSN FFSN again, easy for me to say. And without further ado, every show ends in what, what PJ Steven and I like to call a curtain call, but this is sort of a sentimental curtain call for me this week because we're not talking about anything in particular. I wanted to thank you the fans, the viewers, the listeners. However you have watched this show over season five, you have seen a lot of content. I believe we are almost at 80 episodes for the year between wrestling and football. PJ, Steven, and I did a lot of wrestling talk. We are going to come back next season. We are going to do some more of the 1997 uh, time machine where PJ, Steven, and I are going to talk more and keep going forward with the WWF from the 1997 uh, era. Uh, and we're going to have more football talk, obviously, on the show as well. This is, and, and again, we're going to talk all things wrestling. I mean, this is WrestleMania season. We will be back after WrestleMania to talk WrestleMania, to speculate what's coming forward. And I'm sure Michael Davis will be back uh, to do that as well. But I want to take this opportunity, wherever you listen, wherever you watched live with us, wherever you listened after the fact, whatever the case is, I truly and genuinely appreciate every single one of you who has been part of this show and helped the show become what it is. All, all nine to 12 listeners a week. It's, it makes me feel really good. Um, we, we're we're going to do some things different. We're going to do some of the things, some of the same things next season. But uh, as always, you know, it's, it's, it wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be doing it if we weren't entertaining somebody. So thanks everybody who has been a part of this show in season five, especially when it comes to the wrestling shows, because that's what this one is. I will not talk to you before then. So enjoy. AEW's uh, revolution in March. Enjoy the Elimination Chamber from Australia. Enjoy WWE WrestleMania 40, whatever it comes to be. Enjoy all the fun wrestling that you've got coming up in the next two months. And make sure you join us on Wednesday when we do our last live football episode for Season 5 of the show. For Michael Davis, it's your guy, Bully Rye, and we'll see you next time right here on Tap.